Thank you for that uh, uh, very nice uh, introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure and a privilege uh, to, to be here. Uh, I'll uh, uh, try to tell you a little bit about our, our um, more recent work on various uh, immunological approaches uh, for bo both Alzheimer's and, and prion disease. And uh, certainly, th there's a whole host of these conformational disorders. Uh, Alzheimer's disease and prion disease, uh, as you've heard, are uh, diseases where a normal protein undergoes a conformational change to a highly beta sheet structure, which is toxic. And my, my lab has been trying a variety of approaches to, to block this abnormal conformation, in particular using the immune system. So uh, in our early work in prion disease, we used uh, systemic immunization with recombinant prion protein. And we were able to show very uh, modest but statistically significant prolongation of the incubation period in mouse models. Uh, we then rapidly turned to uh, uh, doing immunization uh, targeting the mucosa, the gut, because in a number of infectious prion diseases, the gut is the point of entry of the infectious agent, like in new variants, CJD, and chronic wasting disease. So in these uh, diseases, there's entry via the gut. There's then replication in the lymphoreticular system, which is not uh, without any symptoms. And then ultimately, you get spread of the prion protein via the peripheral nervous system and sometimes systemically and ultimately you have the disease uh, in the brain. So we uh, turned to using uh, salmonella as a vaccine uh, carrier. Uh, a vaccine attenuated salmonella strains are very widely used in different uh, vaccine preparations, both in humans and in animals, and they're easy to manipulate genetically. So uh, we uh, 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 tested such salmonella vaccines in mouse models of prion disease where the mice were vaccinated orally and then challenged with scrapie and we showed that it was possible to get full protection from oral challenge of scrapie in these mice provided they got a good immune response uh, to, to our vaccine. Uh, we then turned uh, to chronic wasting disease, and as you heard in, in Glenn's talk, this is a, a, a rapidly uh, emerging animal prionosis, which is epidemic in uh, North America. And it certainly does have the potential, like uh, new, uh, new uh, BSC and new variant CJD, to ultimately transmit to humans. Uh, a number of groups have shown that it is transmissible to non-human primates like uh, squirrel monkeys. And uh, although there have been no documented cases of chronic wasting disease spreading to humans, uh, since the incubation period uh, is likely going to be very long, this is something that needs to be very closely monitored. Uh, so we took our, our salmonella uh, vaccine a strain and we engineered them to express deer PRP. And uh, in these uh, blots, we just show that th this salmonella expressing deer PRP is sensitive to protease K. So th these are safe uh, preparations to introduce in, in the wild. This was our uh, uh, vaccine design. We had five vaccinated deer and six control deer. To, in the control deer, we gave them the attenuated salmonella orally, which did not express the, the prion protein. And in our vaccinated group, the salmonella expressed deer PRP. We immunized them uh, uh, over a, a number of months, uh, almost a year. Uh, we also boosted the deer both orally and rectally with polymerized recombinant deer PRP to get the immune response uh, reactive more toward chronic wasting disease species. And then we monitored them over a long period of time doing biopsies of their lymphoreticular system, so their tonsils and their rectum, to look at replication of the chronic wasting disease agent. 
And these were uh, some of the procedures we did, uh, 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 taking samples of saliva and, and rectum, et cetera. Uh, when we began the experiment, uh, we, we actually introduced the, the vaccine via a stomach tube, but uh, subsequently we learned that we could give the vaccine in cookies that the deer were very partial to. So that made life easier for the deer and for us as well. Uh, so it was very important to get an, an immune response uh, in the tonsil uh, 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 since that is an early uh, site of chronic wasting disease replication. Uh, this shows that we were able to introduce good uh, anti-PRP CWD titers in the saliva of the deer, which is important for uh, protection, and also in, in the feces. Uh, this was not a popular job extracting uh, IgA from the feces in the lab. Uh, uh, there was also systemic anti-PRP IgM, which again, uh, important for protection. We monitored uh, the presence of the CWD agent and the biopsies in the, here in the lymphoreticular uh, 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 tissue uh, from the rectal biopsy. You can see it's positive in our controlled deer, whereas in this vaccinated deer, it was uh, absent. This shows the survival curve. So there was a very significant prolongation of the incubation period in the vaccinated deer, with one of the deer having full protection from uh, uh, clinical chronic wasting disease. Uh, th these complicated blots just show that in the uh, blood, in the serum of the vaccinated deer, we were able to detect antibodies that recognized uh, polymerized deer PRP, whereas in the control deer, there was no such uh, reactivity. The control deer did have a very strong immune response to Salmonella, which was the vaccine carrier system. But uh, in the vaccinated deer, there was an immune response to the, the uh, uh, aggregated uh, deer uh, CWD uh, uh, protein. So uh, hence, we showed that with this oral vaccination, we were able to break immunological tolerance, produce antibodies. Uh, there was no uh, toxicity of this vaccine. And, and this was the, the first uh, partially successful uh, vaccine in a species that naturally get uh, a prion infection. So turning to uh, some vaccine uh, approaches in Alzheimer's disease, which also have importance for uh, prion vaccines, there's a number of different approaches and targets. One can do active immunization, engaging the immune system to produce antibodies, or you can directly inject antibodies in passive immunization. These can be targeting different species of the amyloid beta protein, which is important for plaques. Or one can also target different species of the tau protein, which is important for making neurofibrillary tangles. It's also potentially possible to uh, attack both of these abnormal uh, proteins at the same time through uh, abnormal confirmation directed approaches. So some approaches uh, are plaque busters, they're attacking the amyloid beta. Other approaches are uh, addressing pathological tau. And we, we were particularly uh, interested in developing these beta sheet buster approaches where the sh shared abnormal conformation of both uh, the tau, phos abnormally phosphorylated tau, and the A beta protein could be targeted at the same time. Uh, this type of approach also has a lot of potential applicability for prion disease. Uh, so th this approach uh, we patented in a, a couple of recent patents where the methods are more fully explained. Uh, the approach is based on a very rare autosomal dominant British dementia where there's a missense mutation and a stop codon and a piece of DNA gets translated which should not be translated. It has no homology to any a human or a mammalian protein, but is very amyloidogenic. So we use this particular sequence, 
and then uh, through controlled polymerization uh, form these oligomeric structures which are similar to a beta oligomers, tau oligomers, or indeed PRP oligomers. And we use these for immunization in different animal models. So we, we use different uh, animal transgenic strains to uh, induce active immunization, and then we tested the behavior of these animals as a readout. One of these behaviors is a radial arm maze, so the mice are deprived of water, and they have a water reward at the end, so they go down the arm, drink the water, and if they go down the same arm again, that counts as a mistake. So that's an error. So you can see in, in this particular experiment, the control transgenic animals that didn't get a vaccine made lots of errors, whereas the vaccinated uh, uh, transgenic animals made fewer and behaved similarly to wild type animals. So we showed this in a number of, of different uh, animal systems, here showing that the amyloid plaques were greatly reduced uh, the oligomer species were also reduced. So again, the oligomers are the most toxic forms of these proteins. Uh, the tau pathology, the neurofibrillary tangle-like pathology was also substantially reduced. So th these uh, sets of experiments allowed us to show that uh, this is a sort of approach that can address uh, different types of abnormal pathological conformation. We've also done experiments where we've uh, immunized uh, animals with uh, aggregated human uh, PRP, uh, and we're able to show that uh, uh, this sort of immunization with polymerized uh, uh, Brie uh, protein is able to induce an antibody response to the, the, the prion protein. Uh, we've gone on to generate a number of monoclonal antibodies using this polymeride Brie preparation. And th th this is just a, a set of experiments using wild-type animals where we do the immunization. And the, the mice get screened for uh, antibody production to different polymerized species, different uh, pathological species of both a beta tau, as well as the prion protein. Uh, we're also doing immunizations in camelids, llamas, uh, since uh, these animals uh, produce very specialized antibodies that might be useful for human, direct human use. So we have a, a, a set of these different monoclonal antibodies. Uh, these Western blots show that uh, some of these antibodies are able to uh, re recognize different uh, uh, pathological proteins, such as scrapie here, uh, aggregated A beta, as well as uh, paired helical filaments uh, extracted from uh, human tissue, so uh, reactive to uh, uh, abnormally uh, 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 polymerized tau protein. Uh, they give specific immunolabeling in Alzheimer's disease, shown here, uh, immunolabeling uh, disease neurons, whereas in control uh, brain specimens, there's no labeling. And here, with one of these antibodies, you're seeing co-localization with a, uh, uh, a beta uh, in neurons, as well as co-localization with tau. Uh, so the, the antibody is uh, recognizing neurons affected with both tau-related pathology as well as A beta-related pathology. Uh, the uh, reactivity is very specific to conformation, so th th this is uh, uh, a technique called surface plasmon resonance where uh, one looks at the strength of interaction, the binding between uh, two proteins. And this particular antibody very specifically is recognizing aggregated oligomeric amyloid beta, whereas when you take the same A beta peptide and make it monomeric, like a normal A beta peptide, the antibody does not recognize it at all. So th this is an experiment just showing the, that the reactivity is very specific to abnormal conformation. 
we've used uh, one of these antibodies with a passive immunization in an Alzheimer's disease model where we've injected the antibody uh, into the gut uh, uh, intraperitoneally. And these were animals with fairly advanced disease, so they, they were quite old and, and relatively demented when we did the experiment. Uh, and, and this shows that this sort of treatment, again, with that radial arm maze test, uh, 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 prevents this cognitive deficit in the treated animals that they're behaving similarly to wild-type animals. Uh, this same antibody uh, has uh, uh, effectiveness against uh, uh, the prion protein in tissue culture systems of prion infectivity. So you're, you're seeing clearance of uh, scrapey infectivity in this tissue culture system that's similar to uh, an anti PRP antibody, 6011, that uh, is known to be effective to clear prion infection in the system. Uh, hence, uh, these monoclonal antibodies that we're generating have therapeutic potential both for Alzheimer's disease where they're uh, attacking oligomers of A beta and tau, but in some of these preliminary experiments that they have potential for being also used uh, for uh, prion uh, disease and, and uh, prion infectivity. So uh, I believe that in all of these conformational disorders, Alzheimer's, prion disease, uh, Parkinson's disease, targeting the pathological conformation uh, with uh, clever immunomodulation has great therapeutic uh, potential. And when combined with, uh, for example, very early detection of prion disease, as, as Byron was discussing, that they will have a, a great therapeutic uh, potential. Uh, so th th this, the, the more simple uh, com conclusions of my, my talk, and uh, importantly, th this was done with, with lo lots of uh, uh, input from folks in my lab, and the chronic wasting disease experiments were done in the laboratories of Ed Hoover and uh, Candace Mathiason in Colorado State and their collaborators uh, elsewhere. Uh, thank you.